Star Wars prequels. Before I get into that, no, I haven't seen The Force Awakens yet. That would require that I leave the house, go out to a dark and germy theater, uncomfortable, noisy, and just surrounded with people! Ugh. So Jerome Weaselberry is forever doomed to be at least three months behind on everything. Oh well, pretty much everything I talk about here is old anyway, so it's not like it's a huge change, right? Anyway, back to the prequels. I wasn't even gonna watch the prequels, but then so many people were saying that I should, that I was like, okay, and then it just felt like I should review them because everybody else has. Now the fact that everybody else has means I won't be saying anything that hasn't been said before. Don't expect anything new here! <laughs> Alright, I've stalled long enough. Let's just get this over with. I'll talk about each movie and throw out negative and positive comments and uh, then we'll never speak of it again. Episode 1, The Phantom Menace, 1999. Two hours and 16 minutes! This is definitely and without question the worst of the trilogy. What was so bad about it? Everything. The kid acting was awful. Jake Lloyd, is that his name? I feel bad because like he's, he, this movie pretty much started and ended his career and that's sad. But like, he was, he was, it, ugh. And yeah, Natalie Portman wasn't too great here either. Pod racing, ugh. Jar Jar Banks and his stupid annoying face and his stupid annoying voice and it's just, ah, shut up. You're so unnecessary and irritating and you're not funny. And I don't want a whole bunch of stupid, eight-year-old humor poop jokes put into a movie. In addition to Jar Jar Binks, there were a whole bunch of other characters that didn't really matter at all, and I just felt like, unless you are important to this whole thing, I'm not gonna waste my time learning your name and learning how to distinguish you from all of the other millions of freaky looking characters here. So I just kind of felt like, <sighs> through the whole thing, was there anything that I did like? Um, I like Darth Maul. He's got really cool makeup. He's got a cape. He's got a really cool voice. That whole scene with uh, the fight between... The lightsaber fight, that's what it's called. Whoa. The lightsaber fight between him and Obi-Wan Kenobi and Qui-Gon Jinn, that was really cool. And I was like, this is the only part of the movie that I'm really interested in. And I also like the John Williams piece that was written to accompany that scene. Duel of the Fates. It's nice and intense and creepy. Episode 2, Attack of the Clones, 2002. Two hours and 12 minutes! Two hours and 22 minutes?! Basically, this movie is the bridge for two things. Number one, it advances us ten years in Anakin Skywalker's training, showing that he's learned a lot and become powerful, but he's reckless, and he drives Obi-Wan kind of crazy, even though they're kind of buddies. And number two, developing the forbidden romance between Anakin and Padme. Now, the problem with this is that, number one, the training thing, is actually shown better and more efficiently in the opening sequence of Revenge of the Sith. And as for the romance thing, it's given a lot of time. This is practically a chick flick in some regards, but I just don't buy it. For one thing, in The Phantom Menace, Anakin was like 8 or 10, and she was however many years older than him, and so there's that age difference, and it's a little weird, a little awkward. And of course, the awkwardness of the crush is made even worse by the cumbersome dialogue and the cheesy delivery. But beyond that, despite the number of scenes they show of them together, I don't see anything that Anakin does that could possibly make Padme go from being, I don't want you to look at me like that, it's making me uncomfortable, to, I truly, deeply love you. It's... What? No! I don't care how many cutesy Jedi tricks you demonstrate for me. You have to do something really impressive, selfless, heroic, wonderful, for me to stop thinking that you're a creepy creeper. But besides that, what else is wrong with episode two? 
Too many locations! Where the heck am I? I have no idea half the time. Jar Jar Banks! Why are you still here? Ugh, the plot? I could not explain this plot to anyone, so I tried to map it out. So there are two clone armies, right? And one's the stormtroopers made out of Jango Fett, secretly created by the freaky tall aliens at the now dead Jedi's command. Uh, I can't remember, is he the Sith that the Darth Sidious said that he killed? Or is it Darth Sidious? Or what? Um, and they're supposed to serve the Senate or just Chancellor Palpatine, who is Darth Sidious, and uh, I'm not sure if we're supposed to know that he is Darth Sidious or not. It seems really obvious to me, but at the, like, they've also got Jar Jar Binks in here stepping in, like, camel poo, so I don't know what the level of intelligence is supposed to be here. And then there's, uh, this other drone, um, not drone, clone army thing, the the doggy guys with the high-pitched voices, they're created by Count Dooku, who is actually working with four Darth Sidious, who is Chancellor Palpatine. So, are we supposed to think, like, oh, so the evil mastermind has created both of these armies to battle against each other, and it... You know, my level of excitement kind of makes it seem like Attack of the Clones was worse than The Phantom Menace. Um, I didn't think so at the time. What did I like about it? Uh, Christopher Lee! He's in this movie as Count Dooku, and that's exciting, except it also makes me sad because Christopher Lee passed away, and he's not here anymore to play awesome villains with deep voices. I've got to give props to Padme when she's kicking butt and not just running around with eccentric hairstyles and interesting but impractical clothing. She's a pretty good heroine. And again, as with Duel of the Fates, the love theme that John Williams wrote for Anakin and Padme is pretty nice. Although sometimes it seemed like it was written to reflect the idea of the forbidden romance and not what was actually happening on screen between Anakin and Padme. Episode 3, Revenge of the Sith, 2005, 2 hours and 20 minutes. I am agreeing with the general consensus on this one. This is the best of the trilogy. The criticism that I have for it really isn't all that bad. I thought that the ending was a little rushed, and I can't believe I'm saying that. It did seem like they had a whole bunch of things that they wanted to cram in to tie it into episode four. Too many people, too many things going on. Padme, after having a really strong role in episode two, is stuck doing nothing. And emo Anakin was a little bit much sometimes. But the positives really surprised me. The relationship between Anakin and Obi-Wan, their chemistry, the banter back and forth between them, it actually was working this time. The scripted humor was funny for once. The politics in this one was actually exciting. Everything was better. The pacing, continuity, acting, writing, story. It was like a real movie, finally. I wasn't really feeling Yoda in the first two movies, but I liked him here. General Grievous. He was pretty cool, I have to say. And you know, the moment where Anakin Skywalker becomes Darth Vader, it's the moment that you've been waiting for all along, and it's a little cheesy, the no and everything, but the helmet coming down and clicking on and the breathing with the Imperial March going in the background, it's just like, oh snap, everything has come together at last. And thus ends the trilogy. So, my concluding thoughts... Let's start with the positive, shall we? Who doesn't want to sit and hear John Williams' music for a couple hours? I think that the overall plot prequel idea slash excuse for making three more Star Wars movies was good. I think that it made sense to have a Darth Vader origin story, and I like the parallels that you can draw between Darth Vader, um, Anakin Skywalker, and Luke Skywalker. In the end, personality-wise, Luke and Leia do seem like they could be Anakin and Padme's kids. Another plus about the trilogy, Ewan McGregor. He is progressively more likable as the trilogy goes on, and I think he does a really good job of capturing Alec Guinness. I enjoyed seeing actors who were returning to roles that they had played in the original trilogy. And yeah, 
There was cool lightsaber stuff. Maybe the number of flips and everything was a little bit impractical, but it was a show. But what is bad about them really tends to outweigh what's good, in my opinion. These movies are bloated. Each movie is over two hours. The fight scenes are too long. Every movie has to have its own villain, and this fight scene is built up to, and then it goes on and on and on. And it's just unnecessary, and in the grand scheme of things, it usually doesn't really matter a whole lot. There's a bloated use of CGI and there's too much going on in each scene. It looked like a video game. I felt like I was watching not just a movie that was based on a video game, but an actual very expensive video game. There were too many characters who were inserted for fan service. Young Greedo? Was that Young Greedo? I'm pretty sure in the last couple of scenes of the last movie they had Captain Antilles in there and then it looked like there was a guy made up to look like Peter Cushing as Grand Moff Tarkin. What was up with that? And then ugh, one thing that was just... Ugh, having Yoda rescued not just by the Wookiees but specifically by Chewbacca. I'm sorry but that just made this world this galaxy way too unbelievably small. Overall, the length of the scenes, the, the runtime, treated everything as of equal importance when most of the two movies are not crucial to the overall story. At least according to my understanding, this is the story of how Anakin Skywalker became Darth Vader. And with that, of course, goes his friendship with Obi-Wan Kenobi, and he's gotta have a relationship with somebody to beget the twins. And yes, you gotta know where the evil emperor came from. That's fine! I'm down with it! But you gotta keep it focused. It didn't need to be three very long movies. Thanks for tuning in to watch me vent. I generally like to review things that I have a lot of positive feelings about so that I can recommend them, but um, it's not really what happened in this case. Thanks for watching! Bye!